From the get-go, Ferdinand has been taking in rotation games and eight ball games and avoiding one pocket games, mostly because one pocket has more game-specific knowledge and skill. We've been tracking the issue though, and we've decided to start taking in one pocket games. Our motivation is simple, including one pocket games makes all the ratings overall better. Here's an interesting question, and I think the answer might get some people's attention. How well do Fargo ratings, the ones based basically on rotation games for high-level players, predict the results of one-pocket matches? Turns out if you stick to players who actually play one-pocket, they do pretty darn well. Here's how we'll show you. We'll start with the one-pocket power rankings list released this past November. Now, this is a pretty amazing example of crowdsourcing and expert judgment. They started by asking a lot of knowledgeable people who, were the, who their top five one-pocket players were. And then these sort of experts' experts, Joey Ryan, Molina Mike, Scott Frost, and Jeremy Jones, each armed with that information and their own insights, came up with a top 20 list. They averaged the places from those top 20 lists and came up with this ranking list. And they talked about it with tons of insight in a must-listen-to episode. Now, you might say that they predict somebody higher on the list, like Justin Hall at number 7, would beat Billy Thorpe number 15 if they matched up in the tournament. But that's misleading, because these are all world-class players that beat one another on any given day. It's more fair to say they predict Justin Hall has a little advantage over Billy Thorpe in the long haul, averaged over conditions. Now, it's hard to get to the long haul, but here's what we can do. We can look for matchups between players on this list that occurred in the last year. So we can start with Buffalo Pro Classic last May, and then we've got U.S. Open last year and this year, Texas Open, Omega and South Carolina, International Open, Action Palace, Iron City, Derby City Classic, Scotty Townsend, and recently an event in Tulsa, and Zigali's in Florida. That leads to 127 matches for which both players were on this list. So we get 127 beads on our abacus thingy, and every time a player higher on the list beats a player lower on the list, we put one to the right, player lower on the list beats the player higher on the list, we put one to the left. We get 68 on the right to 59 on the left, a nine match swing. It's not a very strong effect, which is a reflection of these are all world class players and races to three or four are just pretty short. What happens if we merely reorder these players by Fargo rating? You get this, you can see it's Filler, then Shane, then Dennis, etc. Now there's no question a few of these like Tony Cho and Scott Frost seem pretty far off, but let's not throw out the babies with the bathwater. Let's just see how this unadulterated Fargo rate list does. It does like this. Turns out the Fargo rate ordering also has a nine match swing. Now we have to be careful not to overinterpret here. This is a small sample size, but let's just speculate that these two wildly different orderings having the same outcome suggest maybe there's information in the data that's not captured by the experts and information by the experts that's not captured in the data. And that maybe we can do even better by starting with the Fargo rate ordering and adding in an expert judgment adjustment. Here's one kind of ad hoc way to do that with pretty dramatic results. We start with the player's Fargo rating. Let's take Josh Filler, it's a Fargo rating of 830. Then we add or subtract one point for each place difference between the two judgments. Filler is first by Fargo rating and 13th by expert judgment, so he loses 12 points. Corey Duell stays the same, and Chip Compton goes up 11 points. This leads to a pretty dramatic improvement from a 9-match swing to a 25-match swing. As more one-pocket data is added to Fargo rate, the Fargo ratings themselves will move in the right direction. We've also looked at performance ratings for just the one-pocket games. If we, Fargo rate, were making a top 20 one-pocket list, we'd have Shane right up there at the top with Dennis higher than anybody puts him. And we'd have Gorst and Roland Garcia and Omar al Shaheen on the list. There's Big Time Classic and Buffalo's Pro event coming up in the next several weeks. It'll be fun to see uh, how things move with the one-pocket data going in.